Good morning, Coach. We'll begin with Mike Kliss, Nine News. Yeah, Sean, there's a report from uh, Diana Rossini about the 49ers uh, trying to trade for Cortland Sutton and that um, you rejected it. And I was just wondering, first of all, if it, that's true. And second of all, just part of the discussion, your mindset on, you know, why keeping Cortland and all that stuff. I'll, I'm going to say probably in the last two, three months, there have been multiple teams call about about Cortland. He's a good football player. Um, it's a little bit of a stretch relative to the specifics. Um, I've I read the same thing you read, um, and I would say uh, we, we didn't get that nearly as far down the road as, as he may have reported. So. Um, it, I, it's it's insignificant um, for me to comment on every call that comes into Georgia myself would be ludicrous. Andrew Mason, the fan. Yeah, Sean, you got you picked up uh, Christian Welch uh, late last week. What did you like about him? Did you see something in the practice, in the joint practice, and the game that caught your eye? Yeah, I mean, we felt. Uh, both um we still felt like inside backer was was an area of need for us we we feel like you know uh we went into kind of the i guess you'd say uh final 53 cut down looking at that position um he was someone that stood out on film uh, you know obviously we had practice tape together with him but m more importantly just the body of work for for that player Parker Gabriel, The Post. Hey, Sean, um, can you, Jonas Griffith put something on social media about having ACL surgery. Could you just walk us through the timeline of, you know, releasing him and then and then when you found out about the injury or when the injury may have occurred to the best of your knowledge? Yeah, listen, it, um, this, was, this was tough, tough on him, tough on everyone. Um, <clears throat> he went through the process of being released and then uh, with a little bit unusual in his, Post exam, you know, they discovered more of an issue with his ACL. It wasn't one event specific, but um, so in the end, there'll, there'll be an injury settlement, which is pretty common. What isn't common is uh, is finishing the season um, and playing like he did, and then discovering uh, shoot that this is a little bit more significant than we thought. So. Uh, we're we're going to certainly do right by by the player and and take care of him. He's someone that has busted his tail here for the better part of two years trying to stay healthy. So so then it's a it's an injury settlement rather than him reverting that, to that, reserve injured. That that correct. Eric Delala, DenverBroncos.com. Hey, Coach, as you uh, start the prep for Seattle, just wondering what you see from uh, Mike McDonald defense and how you go about preparing for a team uh, that has new coordinators on both sides of the ball? Yeah, I think week one oftentimes brings these type of games where there's coaching changes. Um, certainly Mike uh, will be heavily involved in what they do defensively, offensively. They have a coordinator coming from uh, University of Washington, um, new special teams coach. So there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, we just finished talking about it, you know, as a team. If you're looking specifically at tape to study individuals, and then obviously, you know, all of last year's film uh, is relevant, certainly the preseason this year. Um, and then more specifically scheme, then, then you get into deciding like what you want to put in your cutups, um, you know, whether it be Ravens film, whether it be preseason film. Um, but it's not that uncommon week one. Chris Thomason, the Gazette. Yeah. Hey, Sean, uh, how does your backup quarterback situation stand? Uh, who's going to be number two on the depth chart? Or if it's not settled, how's that going to be settled this week? Yeah, um, listen, I'll settle it and keep you guys posted. Zach Stevens, DNVR. Hey, Coach, have you decided captains yet? And if so, who are they? And if not, what does that process look like? And when will you decide? Yeah, I think. Oh, you know, in the next couple of days here, uh, as a team, we'll sort through that. Um, it, it's been pretty much the same schedule wise, you know, generally the first week prior to the first game, we do that. Um, 
So that's something that uh, at some point will be announced this week. Arnie Stapleton, Associated Press. Hey, Sean. <clears throat> um, I had a, a quick question about um, John Elway was saying at this golf tournament last week, that he was he was praising Bo Nix and he was saying that he was in good hands under your tutelage because you would um, sort of take care of him and mitigate or minimize any risks he's going to take as a rookie. And I'm just curious if that is the case. Is that something you do with any quarterback, regardless of their experience, or is uh, is uh, treating a rookie different than a veteran? I think um, I think it's not. A, John's dead on relative to us looking at the strengths, the skill sets of a player, certainly a young player. Um, but I would say, look, I've, I've, I've drawn comparisons to switching when Drew was injured five weeks. We had Teddy Bridgewater. We were able to win all five games. You know, then Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill, Kerry Collins. Anytime there's a different player under center, what do they do well? Um, look. It's difficult to play that position, and I've said this before. It's certainly tough if you're having trouble defensively uh, or if you're having trouble running the football. More is asked of that position. Um, so we get a young player like Bo Nix. There's certain skill sets he has, strengths and weaknesses. Hopefully uh, we build on the strengths and and, uh, and then really minimize the things maybe uh, that a young player might face you know, opening up the start of the season. Brennan Cristal, KOA. John, I know you kind of touched on this during during camp, and this might be a better question in a few weeks, but with the conversations about trying to start fast, how helpful can it be that you guys have been on kind of the same schedule with the Sunday games and, and then with obviously when you open up, you know, this Sunday? Yeah, I mean, look, we, we're all uh, – kind of creatures of habit we like a routine i i think certainly it can't help um but i i do like how the preseason unfolded with uh the games you know on every seventh day so uh that worked out pretty well chris thomason yeah yeah just talk about uh you, you know bo Nix, i know you guys have been utilizing the crowd noise to attempt to simulate Seattle. What type of environment will that be for a rookie quarterback to go into in his first NFL start in the season opener? Well, it's going to be loud. Um, and I would imagine there'd be some similarities to when Oregon goes to Washington, you know, and they're playing in front of however many thousand people. That's another loud stadium, uh, really an, an hour down the road. Um, and so we'll deal with the crowd noise this week, and this won't be the first game we play where it's loud. All right, thanks, guys.